Yes. It's serving. That's what that's yeah. what you're doing is you're serving your authors and trying to help yeah. them do the next thing they need to do to yeah. move towards um, obedience and what they feel they're supposed to be doing. You know, all the authors we work with are mm-hmm. Christians, but they don't necessarily write books to all Christian audiences. Yeah, yeah. Could be a secular um, audience. Yeah, I mean, they might be business leaders and yeah. feel like they, they want to pass down some of their business acumen, you mm-hmm. know? But having that like-minded part, that there's something inside of us that wants to share what we've learned. There's something inside of us that wants to make that impact, Mm -hmm. and we're looking for ways to do that. Um, And maybe it's a legacy thing where I've I've lived this story, and I'm ready to share it with others. For whatever reason, someone comes to writing, the the process of writing is a process of, of obedience, really. And so we get to come alongside them. Hey, I'm Noah Elias, and welcome to Creating a Life by Design podcast. Um, I'm so excited about my guest that I've had here today. This is Karen Yates. So glad to have you here. (laughs) And uh, we're going to have a great time because she is an expert in books, book publishing, book writing, and um, working with and helping uh, shepherd authors in their process of creating amazing content. And so I'm so excited. I want you to just hear just a couple bullet points of her, um, uh, just basically what they're known for at Yates and Yates. 45 uh, New York Times bestsellers. And how do you pronounce it? 68 published, what was, what's the term again? Publishers Weekly bestsellers. Publishers Weekly bestsellers. 150 million in publishing contracts and over 45 years of working in the industry and in the business. So I am so excited to have you here. Oh, thank you. We're going to have a good time. Um, we got together because we were in inter- Well, first of all, we've gone to the same church for forever. Yeah, right? a long time. And um, your husband, Curtis, who I'm dear friends with, he also, um, we grew up in the same church, seen each other. And then later on in life, we all grew up, had kids, work companies, work mm-hmm. businesses. And we got to cross paths through another mutual friend that said uh, we should put our heads together. Yeah, yeah. And so um, you guys were in a really cool transition opportunity to build author coaching, which you guys now have, which is an awesome platform for those of, um, that are watching and listening to this that can mm-hmm. get help with their writing career and publishing and all that. And we're going to talk about that today. Mm-hmm. But uh, I am just so excited because I know what's in your head. And I could not be more excited. You're going exci- to extract it <laughs> Yeah, from me. we're going to get it all out. But I'm just so excited because I know for um, myself how much of an impact books have made on my career right. as an entrepreneur. Right. Absolutely incredible. Um, the, the biggest impacts that have had on me from the books I've read, but then also the, the courage to be able to write your own books. And mm-hmm. I want to talk about that process and how you guys can help with that. Um, but first, tell me a little bit about, Karen, I want to hear like, how you got into this whole field, where you were before mm-hmm. Yates and Yates, and um, just kind of like what brought you into it and what even gave you a passion for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I studied English in college. Uh, I was gonna, I thought maybe I would teach. Oh, okay. Um, and interned at a middle school and decided, no, I don't wanna teach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, found out really quick. Um, and so I was on the writing track. I, I, I was a good writer. I liked writing. Um, and so I learned that in college, and I happened to start dating this boy, Curtis Yates. Uh-huh. Who, you got a little swagger in your voice yeah, when you said that. <laughs> and um, he was a year older than me. And his father, Seely Yates, yeah. is the founder of Yates and Yates. Mm-hmm. Um, those 45 years in publishing, I can't take credit for that. Uh, he was doing it way, yeah. way longer than me. Yeah. And so I married in to this business. I started dating Curtis. At the time, Curtis was thinking of going into politics. He was going to go to law school. Um, so it wasn't really on my radar what 
you know, when we were talking about dating or, or when we were talking about getting married, it wasn't yeah. thinking I was going to go into becoming an agent. Um, but it just so happened Curtis uh, got several authors at some really big um, law firms yeah. and decided to turn them down to go work with his dad and his brother at Yates and Yates. And so um, he started out in 2000, actually 1999 was when he started to join the firm. And at the time they were practicing law as well as doing their literary agency. Yeah. And I, we still do both. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, he got into it. And so as the wife, I went into the nonprofit space. I was okay. working, in, working in marketing communications. I started out at Insight for Living with Chuck Swindoll's radio ministry. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. And um, then I moved to Open Doors USA. And then I did some freelance work while we had young children. And I was basically a, a director of communications. I got was it. doing communications, marketing. Um, Insight for Living has a lot of products. And they had a robust, obviously, radio ministry, international. Mm -hmm. So I was helping with... Um, you know, radio scripts, uh, writing those to some of uh, Chuck Swindoll's personal correspondence yep. to helping with, you know, marketing. Digi uh, but this was before the Internet, so it was a lot of direct mail marketing. Yep. Um, and then when I moved over to Open Doors, it was uh, also an international organization, and, and we were trying mm -hmm. to get the word out about the persecuted church. Yep. So I was doing a lot of newsletters, uh, appeal letters, yep. trying to communicate the work that was, was being done. Why way different back give. then. Lots of fundraising. It was way bit different back then. And while I was at, at Open Doors is when e-newsletters and oh, e-fundraising yeah. and everything, everything took off. Everything was e. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, that really was my first exposure to like the digital marketing space and then moved into doing freelance work while I had young kids but on the side always Curtis was bringing me home manuscripts uh -huh. because he was sharing them with me what do you think of this book and I was on social and I was seeing different um, influencers uh, sharing different ideas and um, watching how people were responding and so I ended up sort of being a scout if you will mm -hmm. I ended up sort of noticing voices um, and would point to Curtis and say, hey, have you, you should read this person's blog. Um, you should pay attention to what they're doing. And so gradually started helping Yates and Yates with different things. And I was pulled into marketing meetings for different awesome. books and going to dinners with authors. And then next thing you know, I did 12 years in the nonprofit space and then transitioned over to Yates and Yates. And I've been there nine years. So you list some of the authors. I think that'd be really helpful for everybody to hear the authors that you have and do work with. So our firm, we work with authors like Chuck Swindoll, mm -hmm. um, David Jeremiah, Dr. David Jeremiah, um, John Eldridge, John Maxwell, John A. Cuff. Lots of Johns. Lots of Johns. Yeah, John's a good name for an author. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jenny Allen, yeah. Um, Katie Davis Majors, mm -hmm. Angie Smith, um, trying to think of. Those are all heavy, yeah, heavy hitters. Just amazing communicators. Um, Matt Chandler is another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So just really getting to help them steward their messages yeah. and and communicate and build up the church. Totally. From where they're at with what they feel they're supposed to be mm -hmm. saying and speaking yeah. into the culture. So it's it's awesome. We love our authors. The work that we do we really come alongside of them and shepherd them yeah. and become confidants mm -hmm. and friends yep. a lot of times when you have public ministry when you get to the top of your business you don't always feel like who do you talk to mm -hmm. about some of those high level things and totally. being in that place of of connection and being able to come alongside of our authors is is a wonderful gift of well what we do. you have a multi-layered approach, which I think is great. You have the legal, mm -hmm. you know, you have the agency mm -hmm. and then you just have like the advocacy and friendship that goes along with that. You yeah. know, it's like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen it and that culture is incredible. What you guys offer mm -hmm. is, is awesome. I'm really excited about today and thanks for sharing your background because I want viewers, um, especially entrepreneur business folks that are creatives. Yeah. 
to really get the, a clear understanding of what reality is like in the publishing world. And, you know, we can think of what the front lines of sales and like Barnes and Noble and airport, you know, Hudson News and all that. There's always, yeah. we see what happens out there, but very few people realize what actually has to take place before even going to market. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important to understand like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the world of books, I, I want everybody that's watching and listening to this to, to really understand that your story is your greatest asset. Oh, totally. Right? Mm -hmm. And before we even get into the how of it, the why people should write or consider even taking their testimony, their, their story, their journey, mm -hmm. it can really truly help heal people and or help them in their own journey. Mm -hmm. And so before we even get into the how, can you talk about the why, what has made all the Johns you published and the Jennies, <laughs> it's really the business of helping people, is it not? Like the, 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 the why behind the books? Yes. It's serving. That's, what, that's yeah. what you're doing is you're serving your authors and trying to help yeah. them do the next thing they need to do to yeah. move towards um, obedience and what they feel they're supposed to be doing. You know, all the authors we work with are mm -hmm. Christians, but they don't necessarily write books to all Christian audiences. Yeah, yeah. Could be a secular um, audience. Yeah, I mean, they might be business leaders and yeah. feel like they, they want to pass down some of their business acumen, you mm -hmm. know. But having that like-minded part, that there's something inside of us that wants to share what we've learned. There's something inside mm -hmm. of us that wants to make that impact, mm -hmm. and we're looking for ways to do that. Um, maybe it's a legacy thing where I've I've lived this story, and yeah. I'm ready to share it with others. Yeah. Know, whatever reason someone comes to writing me, the, the process of writing is a process of, of obedience, really. And so we get to come alongside them and serve them and, and shepherd them because because it, it's a it's a painstaking process. You know, you've published. For sure. It's it's a hard it is. process. It takes some time to find your rhythm, to find your voice. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know, imposter syndrome is real, you feel insecure. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing I'll say is different people who want to write a book or who are writing, they might have different goals. Not everyone wants to get on a bestseller list or mm -hmm. get traditionally published. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the reason, the why behind why you're writing is really important for every aspiring author to know is, is what's behind it. Where is it coming from? What would make it successful to me? To where yeah, I'm at. almost like your success criteria. Yes, exactly. And they really have to think that through because whatever your end goal is and why you want something to happen, that's going to really impact your process and what you go after in totally. the process. Yeah. So. Okay, so that's the why behind it. Knowing that any author that is willing to take what they know they got inside, that's just like urging to get out, that yeah. story to be said. Um. There are barriers like, you know, now we've gone from the why and then you've decided I want to write a book. Mm -hmm. OK, I am so glad that we're having this this interview on the show today because I want this to be one of the greatest learnings for aspiring authors or those that want to write a book, whether traditionally or non-traditionally published to stop <laughs> and literally consider taking your book proposal course. Yeah. Yes. It's here's so here's good. here's why. Had I known that, mm -hmm. which I do now, mm -hmm. it's totally changed the way I write. Mm -hmm. It's changed everything, because a book essentially is a business plan. It's a business proposal mm -hmm. with yourself. Like that book proposal course that you guys created, literally is like somebody coming in and poking holes in everything in a good way of saying, it must have, it must have, it must have. It should not have, it should not have, it should not have. To be successful, whether traditionally published or non. Yeah. You yeah. follow me? It's for both. Yes, there are certain elements in a book proposal. Actually, all of the elements are really critical, not just for you to try to get traditionally published, which not everyone will get traditionally published. Right. But you still end up using it in the writing process. For totally. example, there's a section in a book proposal on audience. And you really are, you have to think about your, your primary and your secondary audience. Who are you writing to and why are yeah. you writing to them? Yeah. Where do they shop? 
How old are they? Where do they live? What are their pain points? Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? Really make you dive in and think about your audience. So when you're writing, you're writing to that person. I'm writing to Noah. 100%. And that's an important part of the writing process. And that's a part of the book proposal course. We also talk about... Um, it's something called a unique selling proposition, which, oh, yeah. which a lot of authors, um, aspiring authors, do incorrectly in book proposals. Mm-hmm. And it's talking about if target readers read my book, here's what they're going to get. And the yeah. reason they're going to get it is because I'm going to deliver On in that these promise. ways. Yeah. So it really makes you think about, you know, what what your book is going to do what it's going to give it's not not about you know it's about how am i going to i'm going to make you feel empowered if you read my book to make changes in your life i'm going to make you feel ready to take the next step in whatever because my book is going to give you nine actionable totally. ways for you to grow your business yeah. or whatever and you really outline that in the book proposal and there's parts of the book proposal that if you're taking it to traditional publishing, an editor is going to look at and say, does Noah have writing chops? Mm-hmm. So, you know, people want to talk with us about their book idea because deep down they're wondering, do, do, is it good? Is it good enough? Yeah. And so, you know, it'll help you really work on your writing mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. You have to do chapter um, summaries. You have to do sample chapters. That's mm-hmm. all stuff as an agent. I'm looking at in a book proposal totally. to see, can this person write? Yeah. So there's, there's a lot a, at a publisher, an editor will look at it. And then a marketing team might look at this book proposal. A sales team might look mm-hmm. at this book proposal. Yeah. So you want your book proposal, if you're looking to be traditionally published, yeah. you want it to be you know, top of the line. You want it to stand out yep. and make a real statement that they should take a chance on working with you. Totally. But a lot of people just Google book proposal. Nope. And they get some, you know, basic template that's downloaded and, and that's what they end up, you know, going off of. But what? but I think it is important what you're saying. You know, the book proposal is, the, it's a tool to try to get traditionally published. But it ends up being a tool for the author, really. Um, like you yeah, know, so if, if it were me, which it, it is me, and, and here's what I, I did uh, when we were building out author coaching, good book idea, how do I know I have a good book idea? Yeah. And, and the book proposal course, those two, in my opinion, should be a criteria and filter that you run all your content through. Mm-hmm. Because even if you're just self-publishing, it is a self-imposed like um, filtering yeah. system to like find all the deficits. And I'm, I'm just saying this because as an entrepreneur, you're like, hey, I'm about to put, an, put a lot of time into writing an asset. Mm-hmm. And before you even write, you need to think about these things. Go through these courses. Yeah. Because then you're going to, it, it totally shifted what I wrote, why I wrote, how I wrote, mm-hmm. and totally changed that format. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's so easy to like be an author and live on inspiration and aspiration and you're like you know what but that doesn't write books and that doesn't mm-hmm. make great products. Mm-hmm. There is a science and a formula to great books, mm-hmm. and when people read them, they don't even realize it's happening. No, mm-hmm. but from beginning to end, that is a well thought out, full blown process, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and I think a lot of aspiring authors get snagged. On thinking about writing, they're thinking about writing more than they're writing. Oh, how you know? How do I want to structure my book? Mm-hmm. Um, how do I want each chapter to be? Um, they're thinking about the story that they might want to tell, mm-hmm. but they're not thinking about the reader. This, the, yeah. those two courses. Put your position about, in the buyer. Yeah, the buyer. Why are they going to spend twenty four ninety nine on your book? You got to be thinking about them. What are you going to give them? How are you going to communicate with them and connect with them? Yeah. You know, and people will say, "Well, my story is great, so they're gonna." Well, yeah, but they're not gonna know that until they read the book. So it's yeah. got to be something that gets them in advance where they're gonna spend the money. Totally. So thinking about all that stuff is a really important seed work mm-hmm. that you're doing, groundwork that mm-hmm. you're laying, mm-hmm. um, in order to make sure that you write a really good book. Yeah that then is going to, more people are going to pick up and buy. Mm-hmm. When it comes to traditional publishing, mm-hmm. people that want to get a book deal, yeah, is there 
How often do authors actually just get a one book deal? Or is it typically a collection or a series is a better way to approach things? Meaning, like if I know that I'm gonna spend out of my 20 years of life that I'm gonna write one book a year, mm -hmm. would you say that's probably an author? That's that's an author that's- That's aggressive, one book a year. It's yeah. aggressive. Yeah. yeah, it is. And then you say, To a, there's another person that's just going to do one book and, and hopefully become traditionally published. Is that, is that even possible to be an author that just writes one book and is successful? Like a publisher is willing to put the money behind one book of one author? Is it possible? Well, I, yes. I don't know if it's been it, done it's, or it's does it happen? Possible. Usually. Is it common? No. I don't think it's common, but it is possible. Yeah. You know, I think one question we ask uh, aspiring authors is um, the type of publisher you end up working with. Are they a small publisher? Do they have marketing dollars mm -hmm. to put behind you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to have support? Are you going to have, or, you know, a lot of publishers have to meet their quotas. They totally. have to put out books. Yeah. Um, and so they're looking to put out books. Yeah. Um, agents have to sign people. We're looking for talent. Um, I, I tell people all the time, weekly, I say, you know, I'm looking for talent. I really am. Um, but I'm also looking for talent that I think, oh, if I take this to a publisher, I'm going to be able to get a really strong publisher interested. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little publishers out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hybrid publishers that say, oh, I'll help you here with the self-publishing part. Yeah, yeah. And then you do the marketing. There's a lot of options now yeah. that weren't out there before. And so generally speaking, most traditional publishers, they want someone who is established, who already has an audience, who they know they can get in front of. And mm. that's, you know, it's publisher, it's a business. That's totally right. And so, um, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be like a mega influencer on Instagram or anything. Yeah. But it does, it, the, what they want to see is that, well, Noah has, sorry, I keep using you as that's an example. Fine. But that's fine. But Noah has an engaged audience. Wow, look at his podcast. He's got this many people that are listening to his podcast. Mm, He's yeah. got this many people that are a part of yeah. you know his mentorship or whatever and it just helps them see okay totally there's momentum there i'm going to join that momentum and yep. get on board um mike salisbury in our office loves to say that um publishers uh are not good at starting fires but they're good at pouring the gas, little on, bit the of fire. gas on the fire yeah, that's right and so you know if you're wanting to get traditional traditionally published mm -hmm. you really got to think about starting your fire yeah getting some momentum going mm -hmm. and then how can you bring an agent or yeah. a publisher into the mix to that? yeah i kind of look at it as like don't expect to like build the ship from scratch yeah you just want a publisher to come put wind in the sail of what's already existing yeah? yes yeah that momentum and, and that should be a good thing because you'll have more creative control as well which i know you care about like You'll, you'll have, you'll yeah. know who you want to be because mm -hmm. you'll have done some of that work in advance of it yeah. rather than just, you know, I, I get it. Writers don't want to market. They don't want, they didn't, they, they want to write their book and give it to someone who, you know, takes it to the masses. It just is very rare that that happens nowadays, um, especially with social media um, and with the ability for regular people to tag Taylor Swift on a post and get in, you know, whatever. Totally. I mean, it's just a different, it's a new totally. age Agreed. Agreed. where access to the people, your influencers, people can follow a person directly and hear from them directly. And so, yeah, it's just a different, it's a new age. It's Why should entrepreneurs, age. speakers, influencers write a book? Why is it one of the most powerful assets in their in their arsenal of assets that can go to work for them? I try to encourage this with yeah. everybody that I coach and mentor. Mm -hmm. Their entire, it's mm -hmm. almost like they try to come out with a speaking career and they try to come out with products and all these kind of things. And I'm like, but based on what? I'm like, you have inside of you an IP. Yeah. You have a formula, a framework, a go-to strategy that you've used, make it known to everybody, share it through your story. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's such a, a powerful, powerful tool? 
as a book to be mm -hmm. in somebody's arsenal of what they have to offer. I do think it's a powerful tool. Yeah. For well, on a personal level. Yeah. There's some books that I've read that have changed my life. So I I believe in books as a way mm -hmm. to change lives. Yeah. And books are a, a long form way of communicating something. I could go to a conference and listen to a motivational speaker that one time. It's a 45 minute talk. Wow, that was so powerful. That was impactful. And then I leave. Um, and maybe I follow them on Instagram or something, but a book, I have it with me. I'm highlighting it. I'm underlining it. I read it. It goes back on my shelf. Someone comes over. You should read this book. I give it to them. It has, it's a, it's a way of long form communicating your ideas, being able to use story. Mm -hmm. um, you're not restricted by, you know, I mean, yeah, you have a, however many words you're going to decide to right, do, 40,000, right, right. 50,000 mm -hmm. words, but but you're able to elaborate on your ideas in a yeah. book. And then a book is is long lasting. It really like a business is, card. it's a business card that a book will allow you to get more speaking opportunities. It's a way that you can communicate your ideas yeah. across platforms. Yeah. Um, not everyone is listening to podcasts. Uh, not everyone is uh, yeah. you know uh, on your email list. Yeah. But a book is kind of a universal thing that you can share with anyone and mm -hmm. it it stays around. There are books that you can buy book boundaries that are firm dead with uh, uh, Henry Cloud and John Townsend. It continues to be one of the best selling books. It was written 40 years ago. Isn't that crazy? Um, I mean, books can make an impact long after you're gone. Um, Incredible. You know, it's so that, that those are some of the reasons I think it really it can be a legacy piece mm -hmm. and it can be a way, it can also be a way to communicate your ethos and your values to if you're especially a business leader mm -hmm. and you want to pass down to the yep. next generation that's coming up who you are and why you are the way you are mm -hmm. and how you view customer care and all these things it can really be something that you pass down within yeah. your business and your corporation yeah. to help no, keep good. it established what your ethos and values are what yeah. would you how do you decide whether to go self or traditional publishing What's the deciding factor there? I mean, that just seems like to be the biggest question riddled to solve. Right. Should I go traditional or should I go self? I would say, um, and we actually have some resources on this at Author Coaching. What, what do you got? Um, we we kind of do a pros and cons list of traditional and self-publishing. We'll put that in the show notes, get yeah. people access to that. Oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, I think it would really help people because it really does some of the pros and cons. Essentially, um, when you sign a publishing contract, you're going into partnership with that publisher. Right. And they're a part of the process. And that brings good and sometimes complicated things. Yep. Um, you're going to get access to their editorial team. You're going to get access to their marketing team. Um, they might have an in-house publicist. Uh, your, their sales team. Suddenly you're working with Harper Collins sales team to get your book into bookstores. Yeah. They can get you a kind of retail placement that is, is very, it, it's next to impossible to get when you're self publishing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that is one of the benefits. In addition, a publisher has, they, they might pay you in advance for your book. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they're invested in making sure yeah. that your book sells mm -hmm. because they've partnered with you in the book. Um, but they're going to want to have uh, some say in what the book They're in the says. kitchen. They're in the kitchen. Yeah. So you're cooking with these people. Totally. And um, that can be frustrating for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially who have a, a way of doing things. Um, in self-publishing, you put the money up front. You pay up front. You might, you do your work, but maybe you have a writing coach. Maybe you have an, a substantive editor you bring in for mm -hmm. that. You're paying all that out of pocket in advance. Maybe you need help with the cover design and uh, maybe you're gonna partner with Amazon to self-publish your book. There's some money that you're chipping in there and they're totally. getting a cut. But then once the book goes on sale, all of the profits are going to come right back into your pocket. So it's on you and if you have a platform or a business and mm -hmm. you can sell it direct to your people, uh, you can make a considerable amount of money on the back end. Sure. 
um, and very you, quickly but, but catch up to your investment, but you don't know. You don't right, know. and you don't have the reach that a major publisher has. No. So On the retail end, you don't. Right, but one of the things that you told me and shared with me that I learned through the course that I mm -hmm. thought was just so insane is a year to write the book, Yeah. a year for the book to go to market. Yeah. It's a two-year gig to do. Self-publishing is like nimble. Like yes. you can write it and like within a matter of months, mm -hmm. depending on how editing and fast all that kind of stuff, how fast you go, that you can get kind of instant feedback. Mm -hmm. But I think that those expectations are radically important if you want to go the traditional publishing because it kind of like disarms all the dream of in a, in a way of like, oh, I'm going to be published. You know, I'm going to get, get this deal and I'm going to be worldwide and every airport and all that. I'm like... Do you realize how long it takes? Like making a movie it takes that much to film. It does. Go into post production, then marketing, and then it's finally on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Could take a long time. So I just want to frame that. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. That's it's that's true. Like the timing aspect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you don't always get to pick the window in which the publisher decides that you publish it. That's either. true because you're not the only book they're releasing. You're not the only book, and so yeah, that's a, that's another thing to consider. But yeah, I'm working on projects that are going to drop we're looking at spring of 2025 we're in discussions about it's it's you're working really far out and so sometimes yeah business leaders and entrepreneurs yeah. they don't they're they turn and burn they get stuff totally. done and they don't want to wait for that lengthy of a process right so how would a self-publisher any tips that uh, and i know the course has a lot of these um strategies but any tips a self-publisher uh if if they go to market of, of, of producing it themselves doing the distribution themselves you know typically doing an online store or maybe promoting yeah. it on podcasts and things like that any um is it traditionally through advertising or what's the best what are some of the maybe two tips for self-publisher to take it to market that you would recommend is it like podcast being one of the ways to get it out podcast is a great idea um, honestly, the best thing they could do is they could create a marketing plan for their book. Hmm. They could sit down internally and decide what do we want our, what's the point of this book? What's the purpose of this book? Yeah. How do we want to leverage this book for mm -hmm. our business? Mm -hmm. And really think through because every business is going to have different yeah, that's good things point. that they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So you want to think of a marketing plan and that marketing plan is going to be inclusive of you know, how you might do a, a digital marketing campaign. Maybe there is advertising. Maybe you're going to do um, multiple speaking events leading up to your mm -hmm. um, to the launch of your book. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going to have a book launch party where you sign a certain amount of copies. Maybe you're going to give away a certain amount of copies to some, some you know, higher tier uh, people that are involved. Maybe you're going to think about an influencer mailing where you send out copies to people that you know, you're gonna have different ideas to market and get yeah. the word out about your book. I'll tell you a huge thing to think about if you're self-publishing is what you want your web page, your, your purchase page to do for your book. You're gonna put your book up on your website. Yeah. And you're gonna drive people to your website mm -hmm. to buy your book. And you're gonna to wanna to think about, how am I gonna word it so that I convert? On that page yeah. so that people I drive them yeah. to my page well I want them to get there and I want them to click by mm -hmm. so I need that that sales page to be really strong and you want to think about your Amazon sales page as well you know within publishing uh, there are digital marketers on that publishers team that are testing keywords that are making changes and updating the Amazon feed all the time based on what's happening in the cycle and news Wow. So you're going to need to be thinking about yeah. how you can make your Amazon page as awesome. tight as possible. Yeah, as tight as uh, as possible. Awesome. Yeah. You know, you want to have an author profile on there. Mm -hmm. So certain things, because what you don't want is to do all the marketing work and get to where you're on sale date and when you're doing your big bang, my book's coming out, and you're not ready mm. to capture the sales. Yeah. So. I, th I think that there's a huge expectation that can be established as to, like you said, what are the expectations on your book as to what you want it to do for you? That's, like, let's say it's mm -hmm. like a business and you want it to really add credibility and authority mm -hmm. to your business ethos or your model or whatever. For a pastor, it could be, you know. Um, I want to lead my church in a certain direction. Totally, uh -huh. totally. 
uh, an influencer, a certain piece of wisdom that he's turned into a tool that he wants to be able to use as one of his main products. Um, there's this old saying that you shouldn't have a reality show unless you have uh, a, the house in order mm -hmm. to offer a lot more things so that the infomercial is literally that that the that the show is actually an infomercial. Uh -huh. I kind of look at the books in the same way. Um, that books can really be an amazing asset as a part of a bigger offering mm -hmm. to lead people to a much greater conversation. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. I do. So, can yeah. you speak into that a little bit? Because I think if a lot of authors knew that, they'd probably write more books. Mm -hmm. And and we could even use it loosely in the term of a, of, okay. of a book probably being one of your most leveraged assets of a lead magnet. Well, that's what I was to start say. the conversation, which which might make it sound. You know, salesy. Yeah, salesy. But really, your book, especially if it's got some of who you are and why you are, yeah. the way that you are, what your values are in it, can really be a way of introducing you and your business totally and and to to a broader um, group. Yeah. Who might not have as much and what they feel and every author tries to do this. Um, they're trying to help the reader to trust them. The reader to mm -hmm. um, to believe them, to build that connection, and this is when I'm talking about target audience. I'm talking about how, you know how well do you know your audience? Because your goal as the author is to connect with your reader That's right. through the pages. That's right. And so, what a successful book would do is you would end up connecting with your reader. That's the point. And then building that relationship. Now they're in. Now they know who you are. And next time Noah releases a book, I'm buying Noah's next book. Because totally. I know Noah is a good guy. He knows what he's talking about. I trust him. Mm. And so it really ends up stacking yeah. on itself. Yeah, it builds upon itself. It builds upon yeah. itself. But your, your book can be um, used to be that introductory piece. So we're going we're gonna to shift into author coaching, the platform itself. Yeah. And then you get to ask me a couple questions if I you'd know. like. Okay. okay, so author coaching, cool. We came together. Um, you guys have uh, this heart for really wanting to help authors and yeah. really, you know, and discover, discover them, nurture them, bring them through the process, and and also, what I really loved about your guys' approach with author coaching was being able to, in a good way, and I mean the word intercept, in a good way is get them before a lot of bad mistakes have been mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. So you're catching folks early in the grooming process of like incubating a really great mm -hmm. author, right? And so for those of you that are listening and, and, and watching, you guys do this beautiful opportunity where they can you can take courses like Good Book Idea, um, they can go through the Book Proposal course, um, and then go through the rest of the courses. But ultimately, you, you guys offer group coaching, which I think is fantastic. And then, depending on the author's need, you have this opportunity where like, hey, I've got this idea, I think I've got a book proposal, but I need people to poke holes in everything I'm doing and kind of audit me. And so yeah. you guys do these summits, which is really cool, mm -hmm. like it's an all day summit. Yes. But then you have these bite-sized audits where it's like kind of a quick look under the hood. Yeah, it's two hours. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think it's phenomenal because for folks like me that I would love to be traditionally published, if Lord wills, but also I'm going to continue to self-publish. Uh, it's it's amazing because I can never find a place that offered what you guys have. Mm. And it's that expertise to know that you're getting a legal point of view, mm -hmm. an agent's point of view, but mm -hmm. then people that have a heart for your ministry and being faith-based, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty unbelievable combination. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage everybody here. You can guys can do this through Zoom. You can do it through in person. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's phenomenal. But talk to a little bit about what group coaching looks like and the caliber of folks that you work with, and what and what it's the who is the sweet spot for that experience. It's a person that wants and is going after what, in your opinion, that you've encountered in the group coaching. Mm -hmm. So the thank you for saying all that. That was so kind of you about author coaching, you know, the reason we started author coaching um, is because we can't represent everyone as their agents. Totally. But we see a really great need 
um, especially in the self-publishing world, to help authors. Yeah. And, you know, these days with self-publishing, it's it can be done so well. And so the product can be beautiful and it can be, um, you don't, but you don't need an agent if you're going that route. Mm -hmm. And so, but we want to be able to advise and coach. Yeah, but you can, you can well, I need a coach for that. for that yeah. process. Mentor. Exactly. So we end up being coaches over here and agents over here. Yeah. Um, but the experience is base is, is very similar. And I'll just say for our group coaching, um, the people who have come to us through our group coaching, we put, pull together this cohort and we meet together and we, um, we have a time of teaching kind of at the, at the start and then we have a time of Q&A and people are asking their questions yeah. or giving the answers and there's a time of also supporting and encouraging one another holding each other accountable well, yeah. to you know what their goals yeah. are you're measuring and, everybody yeah and the writing process itself is there's a lot of questions a lot of vulnerabilities uh, who do you go to and and doing it in the context of community and relationship yeah being available mm -hmm. to answer your questions and for you to have this group experience is really what it's all about it's pretty cool we've had um i believe it's three people now through author coaching um, our our group coaching uh, get traditionally published wow and then we've had about eight or nine books come out that are self-published and so it really helped Dude, that's push, amazing push people mm -hmm. wherever they were in the process whether they just had this idea or whether they actually had a manuscript but they didn't know what to do with it yep or whether they had a book they put it out and it, no one's buying it and they don't know why yeah we're trying to address kind of all of those things yep. and do it in the context of community and feedback and accountability yeah so I, it's, it's a, such a great group it's very rewarding for us no it's know? killer it's it's unbelievable work i've seen it in, in in action in person it's incredible i would just say this if you're if if you're listening or watching this and you're a you're a aspiring author that wants mm -hmm. to go into writing and or is writing mm -hmm. author coaching with you guys hands down is the greatest insurance in their career as an author mm -hmm. thank you yes i i feel that without I, question mm -hmm. at least like it's the greatest thing that you could do to one find out if your agent sucks yeah one and not not to say like oh you got to go with yates and yates no no this is purely to say is what I have good? Mm -hmm. Is the team I have good? Is my house in order? Um, is my writing good? Mm -hmm. Do I have what it takes? Mm -hmm. What do I need to cut? What do I need to keep? What do I need to like get? Mm -hmm. um, and you can do one on one coaching calls with us. For and sure. Also in the author audit that you were talking about, that two hour session. That's a time where we really will sit down and evaluate you. We ask you some questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you, you, when we sit down together, we really tell you how it is. Yeah. And we set walk. You walk away with some action items totally. of what to do. To I'm telling you. Or not everyone can do like a group coaching experience. No. We understand. Yeah. Some people want like they want higher to do a one experience. on one yeah. higher touch point. Um. And you know that's a that's a really um practical. Mm -hmm. help that we provide yeah. it's different than taking a course at home in your living room if you want to meet with us and ask us direct questions yeah. about what you need yeah but you know i i would say i think these days what we do when we don't know something is we go to the internet and we google and you might as well roll the dice there's so much bad advice out there and we really should think a bit more critically about who we're getting our advice from. Yeah, it's to it's totally. frustrating to us yeah. to see the le the bad advice. And we have people who have come into our one-on-one -on -one sessions or an author audit or our group coaching who are like, well, I, this person I Googled and this person said to do this. It's like, <sighs> yeah, but I got to go with your, I got to go with your results. Yeah. I got to go with 45 New York Times bestsellers. I've got to go with 150 million in dollars in publishing contracts. Yeah. Where yeah. do you want to take the source of your wisdom for what you're going to apply in your books? Like, well, and I'll tell you the other part of it. <laughs> and this is something it's it, it, it's known throughout the industry is we're truth tellers. So if it's not good, I will tell no, you. No, that I not, do know about you guys. It's not good you'll, enough. You'll, you'll be straight up honest. And, and not everyone wants to hear that. What they want to hear is 
they're there, and, and everything's trust great. Trust me, every uh, flimsy, uh, fast money self-publisher company out there is like, oh, you're great. I'll publish your book for you if you give me this much, $10,000, I'll publish it. And they take your money and they don't care how good your work is. They don't care if your book is good. Totally. They're not evaluating it. No. They're just happy to have your money and they'll give it to you in cheap paper and a cheap book. And so, you know, part of it is you also have to say, I really want to grow. I really want to know, is it good? How can I make it You want better? to get better, yeah. And that's one of the things that, that we do in our one-on-one -on -one sessions and, and, and in our author audits, in our group coaching, that's... Part of our feedback is uh, gentle and encouraging yeah. and honest mm -hmm. help. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, as we wrap up here, and we'll go to a, a couple other questions. What would, or the questions that you can ask me, but what is, um, what do you think, I, I don't want to say the word trending right now, mm -hmm. but what's the best approach with what's going on in the world right now of like subject matter of, you know, you could say self-help or, you know, is there anything that would be advantageous to us in terms of subject matter of, of filling a need, providing a solution through your story to a need that exists that's going on in the world right now that is a genre mm -hmm. that is that is in need right now mm -hmm. that could be filled by an author that might be listening. It's like, hey, listen, you know, could be cabins like I don't know like what is hmm. in the faith-based world in the faith-based world yeah. you know for a trend it seemed like everybody was just trying to overcoming fear for a long time yes then there was this whole slew of like um, cognitive reframing mm -hmm. right that was, on the mind. that was all in the mind yeah I think what, there's what's going on right now any intel it feels to me there is a resurgence of talking about the heart interesting um, talking about uh, revival, talking about vision, um, hmm. addressing issues of belief. I know God loves me, but I don't believe God loves me. Um, hmm. So trying to, yeah, push and motivate and inspire. This is in the Christian space. Sure. Um, you know, I think that during COVID, after COVID, everyone was talking about mental health. And it was just a COVID this, that, and it was... Like so much. So much. Yeah. And there's, it's kind of coming out of that, like, we all are trying to move again. Yeah. So I What's feel next? like there's high inspiration books that are coming out. Mm. High motivation, high inspiration. Karen, that's good. I might even say sort of returning to the basics of, you know, here's the things you can do. The basic thing, like it doesn't have to be. Like you don't sophisticated. Have to reinvent, reinvent every wheel here. Totally. Let's just go back to, but saying it in a new way. Um, in a way that's in a, you. In a fresh way that's you. I mm -hmm. think readers do care a lot about authenticity right now. Um, there was also a movement a long time ago, I'll talk about cover design for a second, where, um, you know, Rachel Hollis started off with, you know, she was on the cover of her book, and then you were seeing a lot of people on the covers of, of their books. And we've moved away from that uh, many years ago, thankfully, and we're moving into these title, driven font like driven pieces of art pieces of art yeah um which i'm loving to see yeah uh, i love to go into barnes and noble or or find the loudest bookstore. thing and, and just go to the front table and just, just look at the books uh-huh and just kind of close your eyes open them which one pops for sure which one stands out to mm -hmm. you and you always have to be thinking also about if that's shrunk down to a teeny tiny thumbnail on an amazon page Someone going to be able to read the title? Totally. You, so those are some of the trends I, I kind of see happening um, I love it. right now. But it's a really exciting time for publishing in many ways. I think we're, we've skinned some of the fat off the top and we're now down to sort of people who have stuck with it. Well, not only that, but you guys, are, you, know, you guys have been through so much. Yeah. Are still around and here to stay. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of folks have fallen away. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. you guys have lasting power and your integrity and your reputation is unbelievable. It's just amazing to work with you guys. We get to wrap up the show with you asking me whatever you want. Yeah, I've been thinking about this for the last hour. <laughs> so favorite ideal Saturday morning schedule activity. Saturday morning schedule mm -hmm. activity? Saturday morning. Yeah. Like what time are you going to start? Yeah, what are so you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? sometimes it's one of the few days that I don't have to be up for something because mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, there's something very early pressing, very mm -hmm. early school and things like that. Depends mm -hmm. what season that you're on with kids and all that. But for uh, Saturdays, typically for me is early, preferably before sunup, mm -hmm. and then hit, um, you know, grab coffee here at the house, pour an Americano, hoodie, my track pants, shoes. I have a pass for Crystal Cove Park. Mm -hmm. I love it. So I'll drive down there. I'll do a five mile walk. Mm -hmm. Typical of prayer, time in the word. And I listen to an audio book. So I kind of split it half and half, halfway yeah. down, halfway back. And so my get my mind right. Mm -hmm. Then I go to a market, have a little breakfast, visit my friend Shelly, who's over there, who owns it. And that place is just, I love know, that place. Yeah. It just like gives mm -hmm. you a hug, you know? So that's, you know, with some journaling in there, with some big band music, cruising around where I grew up, Newport, Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. you know, kind of odds and ends of just like being, it's, this, it's a routine, but it's more so about like, there's no pressing agenda. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've have Sabbath time. Mm -hmm. So that morning time, that sacred time for me is just being in nature while walking, while sharpening the mind and truth. Mm -hmm is something my body craves like the, the, i'll literally wake up early to go do that mm -hmm. because it feels so good sounds like it's input time totally. like sensory input totally input of ideas it's other throughout the week you're mm -hmm. outputting yeah for sure uh -huh. yeah so I, I i i started making experiments you say like saturday right mm -hmm. i literally started designing it how can i make every day a saturday mm -hmm. so now it's it's pretty close to that uh, where mornings five to ten is is that kind of a schedule, mm -hmm. and then ten to like three mm -hmm. is high output, mm -hmm. and then it's like refill the cup, family. Mm -hmm. But I've I've found that my schedule works very very well. The more and more I put self-imposed deadlines, and then start to cut them in half, mm -hmm. and it sounds intense, but I realize that my focus of deep work of high quality is typically within a three hour span. Mm -hmm. So if I'm writing, it'll be wonderful for three hours. Mm -hmm. After that three, it starts to like taper off. And most people are like, yeah, but I gotta write for eight hours. I'm like, please stop, Yeah. change it up, go for a walk, stop doing something with your hands, now do something with your eyes, mm -hmm. do something with your feet. Mm -hmm. So that's how my morning is, yeah. you get two more. Yeah. All right. Um... Let me do a more serious one. Do it. So, big failure and how you overcame it. I'm a uh, professional, like a professional wah wah. Oh, uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be biggest, but how'd no. you move through it? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes there, some people, isn't it amazing? Like, people in your field would say, that's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, you know, we're talking books and mm -hmm. I've two amazing books I've read recently. One of them specifically is about putting your mind in constantly in the game, not in the gap. And so no, you're, you're never failing. You're always learning. Mm -hmm. So everything's happening to me or for me, not to, to not to me. Mm -hmm. And we typically grow up. Everything's happening to me. What's going on? Mm -hmm. No, everything's happening for me. So then you start to go, well, if huh. everything's happening for me, I'm learning. Mm hmm. However, a lot of people have life experience. Very few learn from their life experience. Mm -hmm. So the things that have happened that have been mistakes mm -hmm. or failures have been the most beautiful lessons ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking down to like trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, trauma typically is something that has altered your mood or physical manifestation mm -hmm. that you've just never dealt with. It's only trauma so long as you allow it to remain a trauma. Yeah. So one of the tools that I do is I go into my past and turn everything to profit. 
And so I'll give you a couple of cases. They're they're super small, but like you reframe it in your mind. Correct, correct, one hundred percent. So I take I take whether it was a circumstance, a situation, something that somebody did to me, maybe something that was said about me or a coach or whatever. Like Chantel and I went back twenty five years in our life and listed every single one of them. And so mm-hmm. we said, here's what happened. How did we interpret it? Mm-hmm. But really, what is the truth? Mm-hmm. And you turn it to profit, okay? So then when you reframe it, and then you, being a man of faith, I pray about the person or the situation. I say, forgive them. I forgive, release, and allow for the fullness of the blood of Christ to flow in and through me. And I, I ask for his righteousness to fill me anew with it. Mm-hmm. And it totally, like, now every single time what used to be a trauma comes to mind, you're like, no, I've dealt with that. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's profit. Mm-hmm. So two small ones. I recently did a big project for Disney, and uh, one of them was this installation of these amazing hallway images that were directional, like mm-hmm. Mickey and colors and stuff like that. And um, I'm going to install this thing, and I'm right down towards the very end, and I had everything on this cart, and I'm walking a very long way with this in this underground tunnel. And it was falling off, and I just went to grab it just to hold it for a second. And just by going, oop, like, don't slide off, mm-hmm. snap the whole thing in half. And here, and here it is. Like, this is a piece of art. Right. Now, if I rewind the tape, that piece takes about three weeks to have in production, right? So I did that. I did what mm-hmm. you just did. I'm like, breathe easy. Everything's happening for me, not to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn this thing into profit. And what a great opportunity to learn. Duct tape? No. <laughs> so, and now what's crazy is it was wrapped in paper, but I knew it was broken. Uh-huh. I could feel it on the inside, uh-huh. right? It's just like a broken bone. And here I is, I have the client about to come and tour all of what I've installed and sign off and be whatever. But it's interesting, I said, no, I'm just gonna own it, that it is broken, and then I'm gonna replace it, but let me take a look at how bad it is. And so we get it up, and I install this, and by pushing and kind of forcing things into it with some pressure and with the install tape that we were doing, you really couldn't see the fracture because I pieced it so perfectly. Mm-hmm. The, cl- the breaks were so clean. But I couldn't sleep at night knowing yeah. if I'm like, here it is. I'm like, this is a broken piece, right? right. So brought the client down, took a tour. I'm like, hey, this thing's not where I want it. I'm going to replace it, but this is going to work for right now. Mm-hmm. Right? And I just, I owned it. Mm-hmm. That was one. Yeah, um, great example. That was... And what was interesting was like, normally back in the day, that would have been like an 18 on my scale out of 10. Yeah. This was like a 0.05 because of the way I framed it. It took you three, you said three weeks? It it takes to to create it, yeah. 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 Just the whole process. Yeah. 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 So all that was undone. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, but what it would cost me to redo 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 the whole thing. Yeah. But I'm like, what a great learn. This is awesome. What, what can you even do about it? Because it, it is, this the, is the, the biggest it is. One of the biggest learnings of all looking back over 35, 40 years of working with high agency, like high caliber folks like you, high caliber profile clients and Disney and all this with lots at stake and reputation and integrity. The entrepreneur's ego, you don't want that bruise. You're like, you, you work all day to keep that smooth. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want everything right and I want everything controlled and in good standing. Mm-hmm. And if you get one little blemish, it really ruffles your ego and and your process. Mm-hmm. And so part of a part of uh, one of the things I I've had to always adopt and accept is um, leadership is messy. Yeah, yeah. And being a professional failure is actually what we're in the business of doing. Mm-hmm. Our brains are not wired to get perfect. Our brains are wired to adapt. Mm-hmm. And then I went, well, then why am I trying to get perfect all the time? Mm-hmm. If I just need to become a professional adapter. You are very good at adapting. I've worked with you on some real intense things here and there. I mean, you're, you do pivots better than almost anyone I know. Oh, I appreciate it. And with the positivity, too. That's, you're uh, you're a high inspiration guy, but highly positive. You've got oh, high belief. It. Yeah. It was thanks. always so motivating for us and our team. And just being around you, your energy, it's like... Oh. But you, I know that's something you've... You probably it had, a little bit innate be, in you, but then you probably learned. You learned how to channel. You probably totally. ups and downs at the entrepreneurial life. Yeah. And it's always easiest to do to help 
someone else. Mm -hmm. But when it's happening to yourself, you gotta yeah. like, no, you gotta believe in yourself, dude. Like this, you gotta rally. You've mm -hmm. proven that you can do this. So what I've done to help myself reframe it mm -hmm. is I constantly have to record how well I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So now I do daily, you know, daily win streaks and momentum. Mm -hmm. So I'm always tracking progress, momentum and win streaks. So that's the biggest. Uh, and the second mistake was I had finished probably one of the most monumental pieces for Disney I've ever created. And um, uh, we were actually releasing, it was for the launch of a new park. And so it was a visual that had Walt in it, but also had buildings in it. And it was done, I, I'm done. Like, this is it. And I take it into corporate, we're sitting there, we're looking at it, we're all stoked. And one of the Imagineers says, oh man, we gotta change this, this roof, the tiles on this roof, because this isn't really what's there. And I'm like, uh, like, this is Do done. I have to? This is, and, and, and when I say like this is done, this is like, in order to start that again, as almost right. start, starting change. scratch. Yeah. So this section, you have to number one match color perfectly. Mm -hmm. Second, you have to match out of focus perfectly. There's no margin for error. Then. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Like when you go back, it's literally, you've done surgery, mm -hmm. you've sewed your patient up, mm -hmm. you're good to go. And they're like, dude, you left a scalpel in there. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I might cause more damage going back in. Yeah. Follow me. So that's how this situation was. And I'll never forget. It was the most sick to my stomach. And I, and I, stood, in, I stood in the kitchen, I, lo I stared at it out here on, on the easel. And I remember ha literally having a conversation and talking to my heart. And I said, bud, listen, you have what it takes. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to go and do this with, in less than an hour. You've, you've proven that you can do it mm -hmm. and you are going to do it. I went out there, I rallied. I'm like, I got to get this sucker done. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And when I took it in, and literally, it was like so dis and disheartening in a funny way because you're like, I really, you know, put so much weight into it. She like walks in and she goes, oh, perfect. Okay, so are we on like Thursday going to be like, <laughs> it was that. There was like no beat missed, you know, and I'm like, praise the Lord, I was stoked. Mm -hmm. But that was, a, that was, other than that, and then standing in a Disney meeting and not knowing my fly was down. How do you get over that one? And it was a big deal. Like, like you're pitching a big, awesome opportunity and you've got like folks that are sitting there across from me and you're like, I had to call back to the office and be like, please tell me you guys didn't see. And they were laughing so hard. They go, no, if we did, we would have told you. I'm like, okay, cool. But oh it's like God. those things as an entrepreneur leader, you're just like, uh, it's uh -huh. the last thing you want to see happen. Uh -huh. You got one more question. All right. So your favorite, we're talking about books, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, by, by the way, I'll just throw that, throw this in here before, before I ask my question, that, um, process of reclaiming, renaming, re, oh yeah, um, past to profit. I don't know if you would call it profit, but the, the, the re imagining, yeah. reframing, mm -hmm what was mm -hmm. so that you leave it behind and move into mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. could be an interesting book idea uh -huh. I'm just yep. saying. <laughs> okay there's a lot of people out there yeah you never to, know that need to figure out how mm -hmm. to get over themselves oh yeah and what happened mm -hmm. 10 years ago that they can't change anymore yeah and that's they're stuck there yeah are paralyzed or yep. they've just slowed it, it slowed them down so much they don't know how to get steam again totally um, something like that could really yeah resonate okay but anyway so favorite book that you have read favorite of all time uh okay most impactful other than the bible well that's a yeah that's a given uh, you want me to give you a category? Most impactful personally. Well, the the one one lately that I've been doing, have you read Brandon Manning's All This Child? Yes. So good. That's pretty bonkers. Uh-huh. I read that about 20 years ago. Yeah. The, this new version, especially listening to audio, uh -huh. the poser, the false self, the, the Pharisee. Mm -hmm. 
the inner child. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would highly recommend that to anybody. But in terms of business and craft, I'd say 10x is easier than 2x. Gap in the gain, who not how. Um, Dan Sullivan, Benjamin Hardy did a wonderful job there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of craft, I would say The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Yeah, That's okay. wonderful. Yeah. In terms of application productivity, I'd go Deep Work, Cal Newport. Um, Are you an essentialism guy? What's that? Have you read essentialism? Mm -mm. This is Curtis's, like, he's given up. Holy Grail. Oh, he's given up. I'm going minimalist. The, yeah. Two shirts, two pants. Yeah, it's been helpful. It would be good for business leaders, especially. I want to check it out. Trying it. Yeah. No, I'll check that out. But, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, War of Art, Deep Work has been phenomenal. Redeeming Your Time, Jordan Rayner, he's, he's a buddy of mine. He's done a great job there. Mm -hmm. um, any, anything to, to work on being more efficient and more strategic and more um, uh, higher. My whole life has shifted into less and like super high quality. Yeah. Way more with way less. Um way more with way less, um, less clients, higher quality mm -hmm. in everything, mm -hmm. in everything. And yeah, so you're an impact guy. So it's, you know, yeah. I, my, my, my goal in life to help with others is to work less, to make more, to do what God's called them to do while building his kingdom. So mm -hmm. the work, the least amount, making the most you've ever made is all by design, which is why I created the podcast is like, creating a life by design, not by default. Yeah. But how do we really get that distilled down to the highest quality? And you've been such a great example of like, if you're going to write extraordinary work, you have to have extraordinary like disciplines mm -hmm. and structure to get yourself in a place where you can get that great mm -hmm. output, right? You have to grow that muscle. Mm -hmm. Just like 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were such a big part of like, in a good way, you know, it's kind of like, really? Prove it. And then, you know, I put that self-imposed challenge that in six weeks, I'm going to write yeah, the manuscript. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And like, Unreal. that, had that not happened. So now that is a routine every year. I'm like, I'm on those flights. Mm -hmm. Got five hours each way. Perfect mm -hmm. time to write a book. Mm -hmm. Nobody's bothering you, you know? You're up in this little cloud, literally. Mm -hmm. So you've done a really good job of, of um, really focus on on the the discipline around that because i'm a disciplined guy mm -hmm. and structure but when it comes to writing writing takes a whole different type of muscle than anything else and it can it can be learned i'm i'm sure that it's developed significantly over the years as you've added more books to your arsenal and as you've mm -hmm. implemented stuff it, it it's one of those things you really do the more you do it, oh gosh! The more you find your voice, the more you find your rhythm. The more yeah. you you know how to, and, and it's somewhat about confidence, um, but it it is a muscle that mm -hmm. you develop. Yeah. And you try to communicate. It, the best writers out there did not start out as best writers; they became best oh, yeah. writers. They sucked they, one day, they and they got really, day, really good. And they got crap feedback that was mm -hmm. hard to handle mm -hmm. and they they worked and pushed themselves they went through draft after draft after draft yeah and so you know i think to some of what you're doing or this conversation e even has helped some aspiring writer out there someone who's trying to write their book mm -hmm. just sit down and do it yeah and put in the time yeah and allow yourself to get a little tangled and frustrated with the whole thing and in that you're developing that muscle yeah. the more that you do you're building that muscle strength yeah. and it'll come out with an even better you know product the secret for me was finally embracing and acknowledging that when you make a vow to your your craft mm -hmm. you made a vow to your creativity that you will love it and yes, nurture it right I love that. and when you make a vow to it then you'll book it as a client That'd be like me never taking my wife out on date night. Right. I made a vow to her to like nurture her, to invest in it mm -hmm. and all that. But if you book yourself as a client and you book your writing as a client. You mean like schedule it. Like 100%. I'm, doing, I'm from 9 this to This is guarded. It's, it's, it's a non-negotiable. Okay. It's time blocked. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I think it was Stevie Ray Vaughan. And I could be wrong on this quote, but he's like, so 
how do you wait for how do you write and wait for inspiration? And he goes, oh no, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. Inspiration shows up every single morning when I go in the studio at nine. Because when he goes into the studio at nine, that's when inspiration's on. Mm -hmm. He doesn't wait for it. Mm -hmm. It's on when he says, I'm going to write. I'm mm -hmm. going to play. Mm -hmm. And so for me as a writer, if I know I've got it booked as a client, I've done that because I honor it. Mm -hmm. And I, I guard that time. And th th I probably say that's probably one of the biggest things to do high quality work is if I'm doing a painting, if I'm writing a book, if I'm writing a podcast, if I'm writing a description for a blog, it's really hard to do that if you can't focus. Mm -hmm. And that's the number one thing everybody's trying to do is focus in a world of distraction. Right? So if you can book it, close things down, phones, laptops, everything gone, mm -hmm. and you're able to literally sit down and just become laser focused, you'll, you'll do what you would normally do in four hours, you'll do it in 30 minutes, because mm -hmm. you're not trying to compete with distraction. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. my three. Yeah, that's good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, um, appreciate you. How, what's the best way, uh, you can just s say it verbally, but what's the best way for folks to get in contact with you, author coaching, uh, what's the URL? Yeah, yeah. authorcoaching.com. Okay. And, and then on Instagram, what do you guys? Uh, author underscore coaching. Okay. And yeah, we're we're we would love to meet with any of your people and mm -hmm. be able to help them along. I think for us, we want to midwife. We want a doula totally. Uh, totally. come alongside of creatives to yeah. try to put. You, you have a we have a choice. We're either on the receiving end of culture. Or we're on the output. I'm going to help change culture. There you go. I'm yeah. going to use the talents and gifts that I've been given in whatever way that is to try yeah. to steer and change culture yeah. in a way that makes it more edifying and more beautiful. I love it. And so we're about like, let's try to get people back in the game, yeah. get on the offensive and help them That's awesome. you know, whatever they need. So yeah, we would love to come alongside anyone who has any questions. Well, we got, you can do a one-on-one. A -on -one. With yeah. them audit, you'll do a uh, one on team with them uh, in person in a summit. You've got courses uh, that they can take a la carte on whether it's that good book idea, a book proposal. Um, and um, you can also come in and do group coaching if they want to do ongoing shepherding and, yeah. and help with that. So that's fantastic. But um, yeah, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Um, if you'd like, I'd love for you to leave a comment down below and hit the subscribe button as well as uh, leave us a review. It would really help with our ratings and just so grateful for you being here and cannot wait to see you on the next episode. Look down below for all the show notes with everything that you need from Karen and author coaching. I'll see you next time.